Hello all, Jeff here with a new video with something different for today. Since the Bathurst 1000 was going to be on this weekend, now it's December because of COVID, I thought I'd do an ultimate top 10 shootout. Basically, 10 previous Bathurst win cars from between 1963 and 1989 and just have a runoff like old times. I thought it'd be a bit of fun, so let's get to it. So here are the 10 contenders for this ultimate top 10 shootout. Let's check them out. Ignore the Lotus Badger on this car, because this is the Cortina that won the very first great race at Bathurst from Harry Firth and Bob Jane behind the wheel. Next up, yes, a Mini Cooper one with Ronald Alton and Bob Holden. This would never happen these days. The beginning of a legacy, Peter Brock's XU1 Tirana from 1972. Yes, this is the 976 car of Alan Moffat that didn't win. However, he would use this car for the entire 77 season by Bathurst. It was an XC and himself and Jack Hicks would dominate. Now to the most dominating car in Bathurst 1000 history. The A9X of Peter Brock and Jim Richards. Winning by six laps and Brocky smashing the lap record on the last lap. Yep, here is True Blue of John French and Dick Johnson. The legacy of Dick Johnson began very successfully right here. The VH Commodore of Brock and Perkins, this would end up being the 25 car next year and would win again, one of only two cars to do so. The Big Cat, the Jaguar XJS, three cars, this was the third car that would go on to win that day. One for the privateers, Alan Gross finally getting his victory in the Chickadee BK with Graham Bailey. And last but not least, perhaps the fastest Sierra in the world, and that is driven by Dick Johnson and Tom Bauer. Alright, first cab off the ranks, Little Cortina. First car that win the great race at Bathurst. Have to get a bit slidey at the start. <laughs> That's not ideal. Harry Firth, Bob Jane wins of the first race as we go into Hell Corner. It's okay, I guess. Bit of a slide out of there. Bob Jane win another one in another Cortina of the next year. Harry Firth would win another one in 67. Harry Firth would manage the whole deal team later on and Bob Jane, he's got a very big tire store franchise which is still going to this day. The Cortina, tricky thing to drive. Because you think you can just bang it around corners like it's nothing, but the fact it's got vintage 60s tyres means there's a ton of body roll and I've got no doubt these tyres are very, very skinny as well. So you've got to be very delicate. And flipping on downshifts takes forever as well. That's kind of okay out of the cutting. Now, Reed Park. If you get the line right, this is flat. That's just flat. <laughs> the great, you gotta be so careful because this thing just bonds out. So you have to lift just so you can get the car around. Because yeah, because of this lack of grip, it's actually a very understeery car. Despite being rear wheel drive. See that? The, the, the bumps just unsettle the car in a huge way. So you gotta be very careful. Skyline, S's. Very easy to understeer at this little corner, but it's kind of okay. Dipper could have been better. Now we get to the elbow. Now can we get it turned? You've got to be so tender through there. It's, it's ridiculous. You think you just go on the brakes like it's nothing. This is not an M3. This is not an Alan Moffat RX-7. Just got to take it so gently so tenderly around here but that's the limiter and we're on the longest gears possible as well as we plunge at a chase which wasn't there in 63 here we go hard on the brakes here did we get turned oh, just thank god for the curb oh these big curbs they unsettle the car because it's so small Turn. Oh. oh wow. 
That was sketchy. <laughs> a 2.45.3 to start things off for the shootout. Nice. No, you are not hearing or seeing things. The Mini Cooper was a Bathurst winner. Multiple Minis dominated the 1966 race. Multiple. It's crazy. And, you, and you'll see why, because these things were just... You can just throw them around like they were nothing. Rano Altonen, only driver from Finland to win the race. Bob Holden competed in many Bathurst 1000 after that, especially in the lower classes. But just look how late you can break here. Remember, this is a 60s car. I mean, that was a bit dodgy, but what can you do there? <laughs> Here we go. Turn. Now, top of the mountain is where you, this mini gains all its time compared to the Cortina. Okay, the great, just look at this. Tiny lifts. I mean, that was dodgy, but still. A lot quicker than Cortina. It's crazy how quick this thing is. Up the top. speed up the hill. The Cortina was bang on a limited even before you get to the top of the crest. Chase. 204 is all you're going to get. Got it braked in the chase. Finally. Finally got, got it braked in the chase. Alright. Murray's corner. Let's see what we can do with this. Alright, 44.284, so, yeah, definitely faster than the Cortina. Alright, Brockies, 972, actually won Tirana. Won the last 500 mile race at Bathurst before Australia moved to the metric system and went with 1,000 kilometres rather than 805 as it was before, so you can understand why the change was made. But yes, the XU1, Peter Brock, it rained that day and it definitely helped um, with the battle against Alan Moffat's GDHO. If it was dry, if there was a supercar war, if the supercar war cars, sorry, the supercar scare cars were allowed to race, things may have been very, very different that day, but Brock went up getting his first Bathurst victory with his car. Only non V8 powered car that Brock won Bathurst in. So that's another fact. And yeah, the XU1, you can throw this around, it's crazy. It's, you know, it's like to me, you can just throw it around anywhere. But the thing is, it, it's at a quicker rate too. I mean, this has got slick, so maybe it's, this mod is based on the 73 Group C spec rather than the production spec of 72, but whatever. Um, yeah, such a such an amazing car and such an icon as well. Did you go in Skyline? The S's. Oh, that's a bit sketchy, Dipper. And now, if you guys didn't know, I actually met Peter Brock when I was a kid. Uh, 
So I met him when I was 10 years old at a signing. Um, I used to draw like a heap of race cars where it was that F1 in the car and I'd, I'd notice like little attention to detail like sponsors, drivers helmets and stuff like that. And you know, Pete could see I had a bit of a gift there and I had a good chat to him for a good half an hour. He signed my Holden Racing team cap. And yeah, he, you know, he was so good to his fans. And, and I'm, you know, you know, I can tell you that he was so good to his fans, and not only that, everyone else that was behind me were probably my age now or older, and they just, they never complained once. It was just so good. Just absolute respect they had for Brock. And there we go, 2.39. That's, I don't think they, these cars did those kind of times back then, but let's go get on with some V8 power. Alan Moffat's Falcon that would end up being the 1977 dominating car. Now as of October 2021, there is no XC Falcon race car to drive. So we're stuck with the XB 76, but the link is in the description below saying that this car ended up being the XC that Moffat and Hicks drove that next year that staged the 1 2 formation finish with Colin Bond. And this car is very tricky to drive. A lot of power, big car, very easy to lose control on this thing. It's very hard to get it stopped too, and the thing is. Once you get to Conrod, you'll see how quick this thing is. That's when you have a 5.8 litre V8 compared to the 5 O's that were in Holden's at the time. Here we go. You can get unsettled over the bigger curbs. But it does have tons of grip, this thing. Again, may not be that accurate compared to the real thing. Oh God. And I chose this one of the Moffat cars because I felt it's easily the most iconic of the lot in terms of the race victory. Although this one's in its past form. But yes, that Jackie X of Le Mans and Formula 1 fame teamed up with Moffat in the number one car in 77. Obviously this is the number, this is in its past form of Vern Schupin. Um, teamed up with Moffat, but yes, Jackie did drive this car to victory one year later. Here we go, Conrod Chase. Somehow we had stopped. <laughs> car from 1976-77 taking the kick to Chase Flatnacker. You love to see it. And it will be a 223.425. These cars were doing those times without the chase. Peter Brock and Jim Richards, 1979 Aon Extra Runner. Car that won by six laps. Most dominant car ever. And Brock broke, broke the lap record on the last lap. And that's how good this car was back in the day. And this is the 79 car because the number 05 on the board is crooked. And Brock, the word Brock and Richard are on one line, not two. That's a good way that it is the 79 car. This man could have been better. That was a bit wide through there, but we'll see. see we can still muster some time, but Dick Johnson's right, these cars are so much easier to drive than the, the Falcons of the day, because they're light, because these are lighter, smaller car in general, widely about rather than the 5.8, it, it can still go so much faster than the Falcon. Oh, <laughs> see what I mean? 
mean, it's still, you have to still tame it, but not as much as the Falcon. Thought it the wall there. Jeez, this car is fun to drive. Now, I've got a die-cast model of this car. In case you're wondering, I bought it a few years ago. But let's drive like Rocky. Elbow out the window well. Elbow on the bed. Ready to bed. Very the closest thing we can do here. <laughs> but the braking of this car is amazing. It's so much better than the Falcon, mainly because, well, it gets so much lighter and smaller. Here we go, chase, play out, the buoy break. <laughs> See, how ridiculous is that? And I reckon we put a break a little later too. This is gonna be quick. Oh, 221.2. Three seconds faster than the Falcon. But now it's time for some 80s machinery. Right, time for True Glue. Nick Johnson's 81 XD. John French's co driver. You know, story about The Rock. Almost derailed Dick's career. But then the public donated a ton of money to get him back on the track for 81. Ford match those donations dollar for dollar and Dick Johnson has an absolute weapon of a car in 1981. Won the champ, won the touring car championship and then we go on to win the great race that year after a red flag incident at McPhillamy. Which probably wouldn't happen now because of the sand traps. But it was a massive wreck and yeah, Dick got the ultimate redemption that year and this thing is a beast. Absolute beast. It's got the same 5.8 litre, pretty much the same 5.8 litre V8 that the modern hard top had before. But it's somewhat more refined as it's got better brakes. Still a handful though. Very nice through there. Now to the great. Could have been a bit bigger through there. Right here. Bit of a bump there. It's okay. Yeah, it's gone, the S's. Let's do this for Queensland, even though I'm Victorian. There we go. You've got to be so tender on the throw out of the dip or you will spin. Bit of a lock up there, but we get it turned. Nice. Now to Conrod. Let's see what this thing can do. Now, you'll see when we go down and chase, you can get on the brakes a lot later than the hard top. So, just wait for it as we plunge down to the chase. Oh, a bit of a lock up there. Oh, we're getting turned. <laughs> nice. Don't know what time this is going to be. Get turned. Oh, 22 1. Ooh, so about a second slower than Brox Tirana. There was definitely more time than that, but uh, what can you do? It's a bit hard when this car is so big. Alright, time for the VH Commodore Peter Brock that won the great race in 982 and 983. Mark's Gates Gold Child of 01 and 02 is the only other car to have won the Bathurst 1000 more than once. That was sketchy in there, let's be honest. 982, Rocky had a new co-driver in Larry Perkins. After Rocky had an epic battle with Alan Gross, Rocky would run away with victory. And he is sixth. Bathurst victory. 983. Different story. Rock and LP were in a brand new 05. 
while this car would end up being number 25 of John Harvey and Phil Brock, that is Peter Brock's brother. 05 would blow its engine. Brocky and LP would take over the 25. Phil Brock never actually, oh, easy mate, never actually participated in the race, is not credited with the victory. That's a very important piece of history in this car for sure because of that. Because it won more than one great race. That was a bit of a freeze there. Let's go on. This is just get stopped. We're trying hard here, boys and girls. better. But there we go. Now on a Conrod. See what this thing can do. In terms of how it drives, it's very similar to the Tirana. I mean, I'm using the longest gear ratios for each car, but I feel the ratios for this car are very long. It's definitely faster in a straight line than the Tirana. As evidence there, because you do need a brake earlier than the Tirana. Oh, that inside curb unsettled the car. But we're still going. Let's see what kind of time this can do. Get turned. 2.21.147. That is pretty much right on the money with the Tirana, to be honest. Right on the money. We need to check that. One tenth quicker than the Tirana. One tenth. Time for the big cat. V12 Jaguar XJS of John Goss and Armin Hana. Only car with four eight cylinders to win the Bathurst 1000. It was the least fancied of the three Tom Walkershaw Jags that turned up to the mountain that year. The first two fell on the wayside. Johnny Goss, Aussie, former Ford runner, previously won the race in 74, so an 11 year wait for him. His co-driver, Armin Hana, only German driver to win the race so far. The Griffins. That's okay through there. But this thing, you have to manhandle it because there's so much power. And it's a big car too. <laughs> Bit of oversteer into the cutting, if you don't mind. Could have been better there. But yeah, it's very softly sprung, this thing. It's a boat. Like the Bentley that won the Bathurst 12 hour in 2020. A big British green boat. They can still, still very chuckable with corners. If you get it right. Oh. Tom Walker did, did um, take the, the main car of theirs to pole position in 85. Turn. Oh, okay, that felt really sketchy in the elbow, but I took the late apex, and away we went. Well, let's see what this thing's made of. Conrod straight. It's like a supercar these days. Wait till you get to the top of this hill to put it in the top gear. There you go. Now to chase. Just getting off the brakes is a bit of a handful with this car bit of weight. This is going to be quick by the way. Get on the brakes. Oh. Whoa! 220.1. I thought we were going to get a 19. But geez, for a Group A car, that is bloody quick. Right. Time for the Chickadee Group A VK Commodore. Let's go. 986 winner. 
bit of a lock up, it didn't really hurt that much there. Had to get out of our corner. Drivers, Alan Grice, long term privateer. Luck was never on his side because he was always at the front. But he finally got that victory in 1986. Team up with Graham Bailey, whose family ran Chickadee, which is all over the car, all over this car. Chickadee ended up getting acquired by Ingham, so I just read that. I didn't realise that. I was wondering what happened to Chickadee, to be honest. Oh, bit of a slide into the cutting if you don't mind. But group A means they were homologation specials, so this one was a you know a race going version of the Brock HGT VK Commodore. Draw in blue, hence why they're called the blue mini. It had absolutely nothing on this in terms of performance. Nothing at all. <laughs> The skyline. The S's is nice there. I feel like I'm a bit tender, but a good dipper though. To the elbow. Nice through there. Now the Conrod. Alright, so this was the last time. So this one, the last Bathurst 1000 before the chase was installed, just in case anyone didn't know that. But here we go into the chase. Lock the rears, but we go around. Nice. Watch out Jag, this is going to be close. Turn. Oh! oh. 220.2. I think the Jag has just pipped it at the post. Yeah, it has. <laughs> wow. One more car, though. Time for Dick Johnson and John Bowers. <laughs> Sierra RS500, as you can see the turbo kicking in there, which dominated the 89 race. It's the car in its future form. Because it does have the 90 livery on it. However, in terms of driving the thing, and I know it says 90 mod, in terms of driving, I do believe it is more of an 89 car. It's got a 5 speed gearbox and not the 6 speed it would have in 92. Driven spin. If you're not straight out of corners, you will have massive overs here, and it means big corrections. Get the cutting right that time. There you go. That little bit of overs here is because of the turbo kicking in. That's a mental piece of kit. This so much so there were so many teams using Sierras back in the day. If you didn't have a Sierra, you were no good. I used to found a way to drive your car as hard as possible, like the price of Percy in 1990, and break the Sierras, but 89, the Walker Chills weren't that great. It was all Sierras. The R32 GDR wasn't around yet. Oh! Woohoo! That's a turbo kicking in. And this car. So wins the 89 race. Ended up being the second number 18 car of Jeff Allen and Paul Harris in 990, which um, finished second. Car 17 blew up, Dick tried again, but the seat would move. Who knows what could have happened if Dick or John Bell got in that car. Anyway. Chase doing something that they didn't do back in the day, which is take the chase and play it in the Sierra. Woohoo! Here we go, hard on the brake. Power out of there. Whoa, 214.985. I know Dick did do a 212 in 
92, but that was a bunch of extra upgrades. But we'll take a 49. I knew it was easily going to win this top 10 shootout. But very, very nice indeed. So there you have it. So the Dick Johnson Don Bow easily winning this top 10 shootout. I think I might do another one of these with other Bathurst winning cars as well in the future. So I'll be looking forward to doing that. But yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. And yeah, it does take a lot of time making these kind of videos, but I, ho I hope you really enjoyed it. So if you did like the video, I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Any advice I I'll take on board. Happy days. And if you are new around here and you want to see more of my content, maybe consider subscribing and tapping the notification icon. Anyway, this is Jeff here. Happy racing. Cheers.